Live from Las Vegas, it's theCUBE. Covering Discover 2016 Las Vegas. Brought to you by Hewlett Packard Enterprise. Now, here are your hosts, John Furrier and Dave Vellante. Hey, welcome back everyone. We are here live in HP Discover for the Cube, this is our flagship program. We go out to the event, extract the signal from the noise. Our next guest is Don Jones and Duncan Campbell. Uh, welcome back to the Cube, guys. Good to see you again. Last time we saw you was HP Discover in London, right after the split. Everyone had a spring in their step. Okay, all steam ahead. That's right. HP Discover 2016 here in Las Vegas, the big show in the States. Um, you still have a spring in your step. You spring it's in your good, step. good sign. I mean, this is about the same kind of messages, but a little bit up level in terms of, you know, speed, data. We heard a lot of the stuff around data at the center of the value proposition. Yep. But also, you know, Meg said something in the keynote, I want to bring this up, because this is the topic of our segment, is really the relationships in the ecosystem. She said around ES, talking about the ES uh, spin out, and then TS, technology services, or technical services, I think technology services, um, Scott Weller's group, that's the crown jewel. Yep. So clearly, and we hear you just said Sapphire and all the other events, the, the cloud game is about integration, it's about value creation, and that's going to be about bringing it all together. Uh, and integration is not kind of talk, it's not as sexy as kind of outcomes or solutions, but that's where, the, that's where the game's being played. So you're seeing the crown jewel being the partnerships, yep. the alliances, done. I mean, what's going on? I mean, this is a game changer because the operating models are changing for the customers. Yep. So that means the relationships on how they get delivered, how you guys form, your partnerships has changed. So give us the update. Well, first off, thanks for having me back. It was, uh, it was a great time in Discover London, and as you can see, we're ready to do it again here in, in Las Vegas. Uh, and you're right, the partnerships that, that HP is driving are becoming much more important to us than they ever have, and they'll be even more so after the ESC, uh, ESCSC uh, spin out and merge. Um, a great example today was the announcement we did with Docker. When I was with you in uh, London, I mentioned this incubation partner team that we were building. And the idea is to take these you know, young, fast, hot startups and really mature them quickly to leverage the best of HP, which is our massive channel, our massive go-to-market ability with their great technology. So we were pleased to be the first, you know, the industry's first Docker container platform that was announced today. So I got to ask you about Docker, because that brings up the whole microservices, you know, with the cloud, I mentioned the, the, the SIs and a lot of alliances are changing around it. A lot of people are saying, you know, how early are we in this shift over to the, what I call the Dockerization, uh, all these fast, we had Dropbox up on stage which shows that, mm -hmm. you know, a company's maturing, certainly a startup, kind of a unicorn. How early are we? Because, you know, Duncan, you know from the early days of HP, HP wasn't num number one in the PC business and then catapulted number one. In fact, their PC Vectra was viewed as kind of like, I mean, you sold one, everyone got a bottle of champagne, but then they <laughs> had a poll at the number one. That's right. So you don't have to be first to be a winner. So like, you know, just because the cloud native stuff was early, mm -hmm. it still hasn't really taken off, or has it? So are we, how early are we for customers? Well, maybe if I can jump in, I, th I think it's important to understand just how fast the market's moving now. So Meg says, you know, the future belongs to the fast. And so that is another reason why us getting out early with Docker, you know, working together, from an engineering standpoint, from a go-to-market standpoint, has been pivotal. So the, the good news is we're out there fast, we're out here making big news in the desert here, and, uh, and, I, and I think that this is just a great sign of the things that we're doing across the board in and alliances. We, and we're, how early are we in the progress bar? I mean, you've seen these cycles before. What's your color on how early you are? I know it's faster changing market, but it's still yeah. early days, isn't it? Well, the one thing that I would say, you know, you got to look at it by industry and, and by how, you know, people are looking at it from an innovation standpoint. So I would, I would uh, be careful to say that, you know, we're, we're early and, and way ahead. I, I think this is a market that's moving fundamentally very fast. HP's out in front and, and from our standpoint, I think it's more from a broader standpoint of what we're doing in alliances that's important. I mean, we're taking an overall HPE type of approach easier to do business with. Now, now the partner can engage faster, and that's really what we did here with Docker. So it's across the board, not just a silo by silo, but fundamentally, from an HP standpoint, you know, bring that whole uh, onslaught of resources to bear. So what's the algorithm, if you will, in terms of getting value out of partnerships? You've got this huge portfolio of, of partners, and you have to reassess that portfolio yeah. pretty, probably more and more lately. Yeah. How do you guys uh, approach that? Yeah. And, and how do you decide and determine how you're going to get value out of those partnerships. Yeah, let me, uh, let, let me answer that and build on it a, a little bit. So if you think about, um, I, was, I was with one of the CEO of one of the largest telcos about, about two weeks ago. 
And he made the point to me that his landline business evaporated in a span of three years. So when I think about how fast these things can go, it can be three years to go from landline completely gone, probably largely gone, to being a, a pure mobile play. And we've got to think about that in the same way as part of our alliance strategy, right? So there are certain big alliance partners that will be important to us for the foreseeable future, the Microsofts, the Accentures, the Deloitte's, the SAP's. We've also got to have this incubation idea. So you saw uh, about a month ago we announced HP Ventures or our Pathfinder program to really make investments, kind of series two, Series B investments in, in, these, uh, in that ecosystem. On top of that, as you go up the stack, you start targeting your alliance partners um, in, in, with incubating solutions like Docker, or Mesosphere, or that list, and then bring those to market through HP's massive channel. And then on top of that, of course, sits these mega partners that are going to be long-term incredibly strategic to the industry and to HP as a whole. Yeah, and, and maybe to build on what Don's saying, I think it goes to show that we feel that the ecosystems are now key. So it's funny, you go out here on the show floor and some of the smaller guys go, hey, we're pretty important now. And the, the fact of the matter is, yes, they are. So when you think about the whole ecosystem, it's both the advisory service, it's, it's the innovation engine, and then the go-to-market force multiplier that we want to have. But it's all, again, aligned to our strategy. That's where it starts around the transformation areas. The ecosystem, I couldn't agree with you more. I think the ecosystem's critical because if you look at the entrepreneurial landscape, it's fast too. Yeah. Fast or die is kind of like we're seeing out there. Certainly in Silicon Valley on the, on the consumer side, you're starting to see the, the chairs kind of being taken up and you know, people are being sold. I had a CEO told me the other day that he, three liquidation phone calls were coming in from startups, couldn't get their Series B financing. Yeah. So if you can't get to revenue, you better be able to stand on your own. So there's going to be some softening. Now, I'm not saying that's a general enterprise market dynamic, but the correlation is that there's a ton of enterprise developer opportunities, huge amount of white space. So uh, do you guys see that impacting your strategy on alliances? Is there a new category? Back in the old days, ISVs, VABs, VARs, they had buzzwords for all that stuff. Is there a new cloud enterprise developer category? Yeah, How yeah. are you guys seeing this develop? I, I think you're, you're viewing it exactly right. I mean, the DevOps space is just ripe for the picking and, and it's growing tremendously across the entire portfolio. Do we have that figured out how we can, you know, take that concept or that thread and incubate that up through those? Probably not yet, but it's something we're going we're to be keeping our eye on for sure. Is there a theme that you guys talk about internally, and certainly we hear that from Meg, the messaging that she's saying, because that's kind of high-level messaging, but as you get down into the tactical alliance plan, is there a certain element that's the rising tide that you see, certainly cloud and DevOps, but is there something specifically that you see that's going to be, that you guys can provide as a rising tide for the ecosystem as it develops? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, well, I, I think what's, what's key here is really within our ISB community, for instance, you have both the things you got to do for the developer side to speed things up, and then there's a go-to-market benefit. So, so what we're doing now is putting those things together, and really doing that since partnering is in our blood, okay, in HPE, and we actually do that cohesively now, and a lot of these partners want to have the flexibility not to be siloed into one particular discipline. So our overall partner ready program is really a cohesive umbrella for all of them. But to answer your question, it's more the um, end to end planning we approach, benefits from fast development to deployment, yeah. and then certainly the, the monetization around that. So I got to ask you guys, because I know the Dell EMC has been top of mind, everyone's uh, mind. You've seen a lot of customers kind of like, not sure what's going on. Michael Dell tried to clear that up at EMC World, but EMC was known for a direct sales force. Okay, so I think one of the people is commenting, hey, they're buying basically EMC Salesforce. HP has a very, very good Salesforce, great service organization in TC, right. great channels and great partnering. How are you guys going to leverage that into the competitive strategy and how are you going to make the ecosystem feel good? I mean, what are some of the things that you're offering to the, to, to the, to the alliance partners that's going to get behind you guys? Yeah. yeah, so a couple of points there. What we're doing basically is putting our customers as our true north. I know that sounds rather trite, but that, that really is what it's about. You align behind that against our four transformation areas and you've been beaten up with those, so I won't go into each, each one of those <laughs> four in detail. Right. <laughs> exactly right. Um, you could probably give the Transform, pitch. accelerate, and enable. That's the three areas in the floor. And one other. So basically, <laughs> so, so basically through, through the transformation areas, customers true north, you then start to triangulate into some really interesting things. What we couldn't do before was say, all right, we're going to make a bet with um, a specific SI with a specific partner solution and take it to market, and we can do that now. So, as an example, we can have a vertical SAP HANA solution for healthcare on HP infrastructure, and we're going to make a bet with Accenture because they're going to be our partner in that space. 
Whereas historically, we would peanut butter that across all the partners and, be, and, and just be dilutive, frankly. Yeah. We weren't taking advantage of our investment or the partners. So we're starting to make bigger and bigger bets. You know, when we were together in, uh, in London, we did the Microsoft bet, and you saw the Docker bet today. Um, and we're going to continue down that path. So On the bets, do you see the SIs um, specializing? Because you're seeing a censure. Yeah, so I think Don brought up something very important, which is really how we're starting to think about go to market and innovating around that. So it really is not just thinking about things in the old way, just like H HP plus a partner. It's more like, you know, we can do better. We can even accelerate this, be more innovative. When you think about combining with an SI from a consulting advisory service, again, with the ISV, and then from a deployment standpoint, why does that matter? Because you can get a force multiplier. You can start to think vertical. And those are things that really, at that point, start to differentiate our overall program. And from our standpoint, at the end of the day, we really want the overall HP Alliance's program to be best in class. The timing is tricky, right? So take the Docker example. John, Don, John, I remember you called me up and said, Jerry Chen did his first deal. Who was that? Docker, that was years ago. Yeah. Right? Okay, so, but yet SAP HANA, you guys went in early. Now maybe there were competitive reasons for that or you know, partnership reasons, et cetera, but you knew, you know, SAP, okay, great. Yeah. So can you how, do you, how do you differentiate between being too early, you can over-rotate into some of the new hot, sexy stuff? What goes into the thinking there? Yeah, so a couple things. So these decisions aren't made in a vacuum by the Alliance guys in any way, shape, or form. If you look at the amount of time that Meg personally spends with these partners, it's actually astronomical. I mean, she and Ben, the CEO of Docker, have been together for you know, at least 30 hours over the course of last month. She and the team from Microsoft, she was going to be there Friday of last week. It just, they're, they're super focused from Meg. And that trickles down to the EC as well, right? All of her direct reports. So I could just see Meg and Ben on the whiteboard. You know, whiteboarding <laughs> they the were going at it. They were going at it. But um, the focus amongst our executive staff on how we partner, how we position those solutions and technologies, and how we show the best of HP. We, uh, we recently completed, um, oddly enough, the first ever Alliance Partner Satisfaction Survey. So we asked our partners, where's HP at on this for you? And I was super pleased with some of the comments and less pleased with others. You know, we came out loudly as the partner they trusted the most. And I was incredibly proud of that. I mean, we do what we say and we, yeah. and we and we, and we say what we're going to do. Um, what they did say was, it's still hard to do business with UHP, right? Mm -hmm. And I think it's a legacy from our old structure with PPS, EG, ES, and, and uh, uh, HP software. So we're simplifying things for them as well in that way. So hopefully we're doing all the right things and they're going to get the value out of the partnership that they're what investing in. What are some of the in. things you mentioned, easy to work with? Is it, is it economics too? I mean, I can imagine the meetings. You know, the, it's what's in it for me kind of exactly. attitude. Exactly. <laughs> what's in it for them? I'm an alliance partner. Hey, HP, you're tough to work with. Like, hey, you guys are working on that. But what's in it for me? How do I win? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mission force multiplier. What does that mean? Money, more cash in my pocket, more go to market resources. Tools, resources. Yeah. It, it, it means all of the above. So, so one, right, there's incremental revenue based on how you partner and partner well. All of these agreements we're doing have very structured business plans. We understand how we're going to make money and some things will be an HP-led sales motion, some will be a partner-led sales motion, and some will be joint. And getting clarity on that is super important. I think we tripped our, over ourselves in that in previous years. So point one, who's selling and how do you sell? What's a go-to-market motion look like? So there's that bit. There's incremental revenue and resources that we can bring to invest in the go-to-market solutions that we're building and creating. So both on the innovation side as well as the go-to-market side. And then finally, it's just the growth that both companies expect based off the investments they're making in those go-to-markets. Yeah, yeah. The, the other thing I would add too is they're going to look at their win rate too. So the fact that we're now can, can really move together as one company with a partner, when yeah. you increase win rate, that's, that's good a win rate's well. huge metric. I mean, you look at the win rate, at the end of the day, that's all rub, rubbing you know, through right. the relationship, you're feeling each other out, it's day to day stuff. The win in rates our, ultimately is the scoreboard. Yeah, in, in, our, in our, uh, our CRM system internally, what we found is if a partner is attached to a deal, win rate is 91%. 91%, I mean, it's just a, an astounding number. If so, they're not attached, it's significantly less. Uh, my final question before we wrap is, how are you guys dealing with the current dynamic of this now horizontally scalable kind of solution set when partners have, I've got a Microsoft practice over here, and i got this practice, you know, centers and whatnot. They all had practices in the old days. Are they also changing within your alliance partners that they had this practice? Well, I'm the Microsoft practice. Are they stove piping? Are they breaking down those silos? 
What's yeah. the landscape like for the partners? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So one of the things I think that we're really seeing is, is more kind of a maturity on how we go to market. And fundamentally, you know, I, I would give a great example. When you even think about IoT, really the best way to approach that is with the vertical lens. Who's in, in the best position to do that are our partners. So the SIs in particular, are, that, that, is some, that is expertise with intellectual property and expertise they bring to the table. We do these, these go-to-market innovations from a triage standpoint. That's, that's a winning hand here in Vegas. John, I'll give you the last word. Take a minute to share with the audience what, what should they know about the Alliance strategy and, and, and how to do business with HP. Give them, the, give them the one minute quick overview and we'll wrap it. Sure thing. Yeah, so again, customers are our guiding north, our true, our true north star, if you will, and it's focused on them first and foremost. For our partners, we've got a programmatic pr approach now to how we manage them, how they work with us, and how we can both grow our revenue together in a way that makes sense for, for both organizations. And I guess the last point that I would, I would just be really precise about, when we look at what we can do with our partners now that we couldn't do before, it's pretty astounding. And you're seeing that in the results on what the things that we're announcing with you know, Microsoft six months ago, Docker today, and we'll continue down that path of making big bets, big investments, and growing our joint businesses. Don, Duncan, thanks for sharing the insights on the alliances. Certainly an opportunity to be competitive advantage for the company, but also more importantly, work with, uh, share the revenue and grow the ecosystem. Great. Thanks so much for sharing the insight on theCUBE. Thanks guys. SiliconANGLE's theCUBE, I'm John Furrier with Dave Vellante. We'll be right back, you're watching theCUBE.